GSB has now been building systems for over two years, and this is the very first system that GSB built. It's out of sample since February the 25th, 2017. Since then, there are some new methods and approaches to building trading systems. I'll demonstrate new features and concepts that are now in GSB. New users will tend to want to turn as many options on at once before they start building systems. I'm going to show why this is not the best way of doing things. We'll compare this approach of using the lot to a more selected approach. We're going to give 60% of the data as unseen data in total. We're going to use from the year 2000 to 30th of June, 80 day blocks. 80 days will be in sample, then 80 days will be out of sample. Then we're going to use the period from 30th of June 2015 to February 2018 as one out of sample period. Then we're going to use from February 2018 to February 2019 as an additional out of sample period. Dates after this is still unseen data, which we can again use for further validation. In this first example, we're going to build systems using all of the indicators. We're going to use all the operators, so add, subtract, multiply, and divide. We're going to use all the entry modes, 8 selected there. 29, 30, and 31 minute bars will be used, which gives us a more robust type of trading system. And we're using a $1,000 stop loss. This is using a GSB manager, which talks to various GSB workers on the cloud. And you can see here that I've had it running for a couple of minutes, but I've got a particularly large and powerful cloud. And so I've got 11 computers connected to this manager. If I go to the reporting graph, you can see that I've got about 65 workers running and it's building 1500 systems in a few minutes. Of course, if you've got one computer, the speed that this will be running will be roughly a tenth of the speed that we have here. But this also highlights the fact that GSB is extremely powerful because you get free cloud workers and you can also provide your own cloud workers to multiply the speed that GSB builds systems. We can now see that we've built 50,000 systems and I've got macro on completion turned to true. So this is going to then automatically walk forward some systems and it's selected the top 250 systems out of the 50,000 there. So if we go to the walk forward graph, we'll start to see that over time 250 walk forwards will be submitted to some of the cloud workers. And we'll come back to that in a while when the walk forward has been completed. We can see here we've now completed 250 systems that have been walk forwarded. The first thing I'm going to do is verify these systems using data that's got random noise added to it. You can see here how I've got eight data streams and four of them have got five ticks of random noise added and the other four have got 10 ticks of random noise added. So I'm going to do right click and I'm going to do verify. When you look in the user task section here, you'll see the status of the systems that have been verified. We'll come back to the results of that in a few minutes time. So I'm going to select all 250 systems and I did that by doing Control A. I'm then going to add them to Favorites D and I'm then going to run Macro 3. What Macro 3 does is it puts those periods, the pre-2015 and the 2015 to 2018 and the 2018 to 2019, it puts those in the statistics section 
and it gives the same period showing the results with and without the walk forward parameters applied. We're interested in the statistics of the 30 minute bars only, not the combination of 29, 30 and 31. So what we can see here in the 2000 to 2015 period is we've got a net profit of $87,000 and half of this is in sample and half of it is out of sample because of the 80 day periods, every second one being used. While that's an impressive result, remember that the bulk of that is, or 50% of it is in sample. The period from the year 2000 to 2018, we have a profit of 19,000. And if we apply the walk forward parameters, we've got a profit of 18,000. But you'll note that the profit factor has increased and the average trade has increased by nearly $20. We can see here that the 2018 to 2019 profit is $7,000, but the drawdown is also just under $7,000 and a really low profit factor. So we actually did very well in this period here of 2015 to 2018 and really poorly from 2018 to 2019. The next thing we're going to do is to look at the walk forward curves and the theory is the greater the stability in parameters, the greater the system will perform out of sample because it tends to mean that the parameters have locked in and are stable and it's robust. And we're looking at the parameter stability course settings. If we look at a system, for example, I've just chosen one of the more stable ones, and we go to walk forward, we see that 21 is stable throughout most of the walk forward runs. 24 is 27, 1.5, 1.25, 1.25 again is stable from here to here. 10 is stable, 51, 800. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the top 90 systems of the 250 and do the performance stats just on those top 90. Now how we do that is we go to macro 5 and that will put 90 systems into favorites D. If you looked earlier it actually showed 250 and then it's changed it to 90. So then I'm going to run macro 3 again and do the stats and it's going to update these figures here. We can see here that the total for the parameters using anchored stability is a fraction higher at 4806. Now I want to look at the verification score and take the top 91 of those systems. So I'm going to hit macro 6 and then hit play. And you can see that put 91 systems into favorites D. I'm then going to run macro 3 again, which does all our statistics. Now we can see here that choosing the top 91 systems gave us 4161 in the total. And this is a summary of the results here. We're going to use these results here as our reference point and try and improve GSB in various ways by tweaking settings and indicators used and things like that. I've made an amendment to the benchmark settings because we're only using the first five entry types because they are the only ones available for trial users and the others are experimental. The best entry type I believe is the crossover entry type. As I want to compare using the lot so to speak I've also used the variable static stop, trailing stop and ATR stop on this comparison in the amended video. Now back to VSS, verification score statistics. The smaller that figure, the better the system is likely to be. If it falls apart when you put random data on it, it means it's not a robust system. I'm now going to show an improved method of getting indicators 
we have about 39 at the moment that we can choose from and some are better than others and weeding out the underperformers will make system building faster and it will give you significantly higher out of sample results. We normally use three indicators in GSB but for indicator testing we can either use one or two. The operators I'm using multiply the entry mode I'm using crossover dual level. Now I'm using 29, 30 and 31 minute bars. Now there's a new change in this build of GSB and this will probably be called advanced trading periods. The auto nth day mode we want to change to trade. So we are building systems with no trade and then once a system is built it will populate in GSB's interface with trade. So everything that we see is going to be 100% out of sample. So I'm going to start building systems. In this example I'm using one indicator. You can see the setting, sign power, sign power, two normalization modes. The weight's fairly standard, 29, 30, 31 minute bars. We could also add some random bars of 5 and 10 ticks there, but that will slow things down. Quite valid to do that. The dates, we're just doing this all of pre-2005 June. Very important, of course, no trade here and trade here. So everything we see is out of sample. We're going to look for 20,000 systems. What I've also done is I've reduced the Pearsons from 0.95 to 0.9 and the profit factor from 1.8 to 1.3. Under the reporting graph, I can see my workers. I'm up to about 40 workers here and rapidly building systems. Of course, this will be much faster than other users will see because I've got a lot more workers available to me. But everyone should be getting some free workers on the cloud. And if you want more speed, you either get your own machine or you can rent some workers from the GSB cloud. If you did want to add some random data here as well, we could add, say, two pieces of random data with five ticks of noise and another two and then you'd see that you've got four additional data streams here but that will slow the building process down a lot and it's an option to do that but it's not essential. The logic behind using random noise on top of the 30 minute data is it's just going to make systems deteriorate even more and that stress tests them and so the more you stress them, the more valid the out-of-sample results are. But just using 30 minute with 29 and 31 minute is also a good stress test. And it makes it harder because the amount of bars in a day varies from 12, 13 and 14. So that in itself stresses oscillators too. But you can see we've now built 20,000 systems. What I'm doing differently now is I'm selecting the top 50% of the 20,000 systems. In the past, I'd be selecting the top 1,000 of 20,000. So I've just selected those systems by clicking on the first entry, scrolling halfway down, holding down Shift and going mouse click. Then I'm going to add those into Favorites A. Now I'm going to go to Favorites A, right click and do Statistics. Save parameter performance. I'll do Alt B to get rid of the top screen. And here we can see how good the oscillators were just using them by themselves. And we want to pick the top 9 to 11. So anything that's green is automatically chosen. As a comparison, I'm now going to do the identical test but using two indicators instead of one. Click there, scroll halfway down, hold down shift and click, right click, 
favorites right click do statistics save parameter performance and here we can see a similar but different set of indicators so we've actually got more than nine in green so we'll just pick the top nine when you compare this list you can see that rate of change decycler oscillator and dmi do not perform well by themselves but perform better when you've got two indicators combined then we will do apply yes and we want to save this so we then want to change this to three so we can build some systems put this back to 0.95 that back to 1.8 and most importantly we put this to all which means any systems built pre-2015 will be looking at all days when it comes in GSB even though it's built on every second lot of 80 trades so then I'll save those there put using two indicators this will have loaded the previous saved settings which you can see in the file here now go to macro 1 hit m1 there on optimization complete we want to do true what that means is it'll run macro 1 which means it'll walk forward the top 250 systems once it's completed building the systems oh we also want to change this back to 50,000 and this is going to take quite some time depending of course on how many workers that you have available we've now built our 50,000 systems and the top 250 of them have been walk forwarded and I've run the macro which put the statistics into the clipboard and you can see there that we've got a total of 9692 the 9693 compares favorably to the previous test using all indicators of 8857. This is the same results using the one indicator method and you can see that we've got like another 20% additional improvement over the results from the two indicator method. There's a lot of room for experimentation and improvement in this area. I've seen results of up to about 14 or 15,000. Now for some markets it's really important to have data too, particularly the energies. What that means is a system can key off the primary data stream, which in this case is the S&P 500 futures, or I've used the example here of the S&P cash indice. using the Russell 2000 gave us an average result of 6033 so that's even more degraded compared to the S&P 500 cash indice using the S&P 400 cash indice was better than the Russell 2000 but still not great giving us a total average of 7455 I've also done the same tests for all 39 indicators instead of all nine for S&P 400 cash, Russell 2000 cash, S&P 500 cash. I can see that nine indicators dramatically improved the performance on all of these tests. You can also see that when we used the S&P 500 and the S&P 400 cash indice, combined with the ES results didn't improve either now all these systems were using 
both normalization modes and we've got highest lowest scaling and center scaling and so we could try to run the same tests with just center scaling and leave highest lowest or we could do the opposite and use highest lowest and turn center scaling off now I did both of these tests and I got some nice results so my benchmark for testing the normalization methods the average was one two three six five and that was using both scaling methods when we used the high low normalization we got 10279 so a significant degradation but when we used center scaling we got 14023 and those results clearly show that one method was worse than the average and one method was substantially better so again by the process of having a benchmark we found out things that have improved GSB's output that you would never know just by looking at individual systems so in summary using a benchmark and trying to improve one thing at a time we've gone from an average of 4625 to 14,000 that's a dramatic improvement in out of sample results and it would not have been possible to do this objectively looking at one system at a time compared to hundreds or thousands of systems this is the strength of the GSB methodology and I'd encourage you very strongly to follow that because it works well now we need to go from having a methodology that works collectively on a large group of systems to getting an individual system this should be the topic of an entire new video but what I'm going to do is use either the top 91 VSS or top walk forward scores I could do either or I could do one that the statistics happen to be the highest on I'm going to do create update family now that's given us three families out of those 91 systems so a family is a group of systems that might share the same oscillators but don't share the same parameters or may not share the same normalization methods or stop levels or entry types if we scroll to the right we see that family one has got 72 members that is clearly the strongest family because it's got the biggest amount of systems that are similar that have passed the robustness testing in the methodology so far family two has 17 members and family three has two members all of these could be valid systems but I would expect that the one with the most members is the strongest so I'm going to put that system into trade station you could of course use multi charts or a ninja trader before I do that though I'm going to change the dates to all and I'm going to do override original settings which means instead of the chart stopping at 2015 it'll stop at the end date now we see that the chart stops at February the 28th 2019 I'm going to go into the script here right click copy to clipboard and I'm going to paste that into trade station hit F3 to verify it and I'm particularly interested in the results after February the 28th 2019 because that's an out of sample period it's well under a year so it's hard to tell from that in itself if a system is good or bad but we would hope that it is profitable during that period of course it's hard to know because it depends a lot on the market conditions there is slippage in commission of one tick each side and two dollars forty per side brokerage so we can see the results out of sample here look profitable had a particularly good month in August so I'm happy with that as a result hope you enjoy watching this video please support GSB by liking the video and purchasing GSB thanks for watching